Right, guys, we are delighted to be doing our very first online interview in these strange, strange circumstances. And uh, not a better way to kick it off with our good friend, Sam from Pioneer DJ, who's the business development executive for the United Kingdom and Ireland. Sam, how the hell are you, mate? What's happening? <laughs> how are we all? That's, that's the question. I'm all right, mate. I'm good. I'm, thank you very much for having me on board with this. Um, yeah, I'm all right. I'm getting there. Getting there. It's been a long time coming to get you uh, on a podcast. Uh, We're going to do... Two years, three months to be... Just, just waiting for a pandemic to make it happen. <laughs> Aye, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, I think I think we we for, for everybody watching, we have tried getting this going for quite some time, but we never really found the right time. And I mean, if I wasn't invited it's during the pandemic, then I'd have completely given up on the whole thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just outright refuse it. So, how are you finding like working all that? Because obviously, this is something that's uh, stopping a lot of people. I mean, us at the studio, we've been trying to do a lot of our stuff online, but obviously unable to do a lot of our services. So are you finding that you're able to get some stuff done and what changes are kind of, have you been implementing really? The, um, I think at first, because my job amongst other people within the European company of Pioneer DJ, we rely on travel. We're on the road. You know, you guys know yourself, we work with you. I'm on the road Monday to Friday. So, you know, it's that term, you can't cage a lion. Mm -hmm. uh, you felt caged at first, but then I started to just warm to the whole idea. I started to get a routine in order. I was getting up at the same time as I would if I was on the road, making sure I'm eating right, making sure the fitness is there, just keeping proactive because it is so easy to get on the couch and stick Netflix on during this time. In regards to work... I agree with that. It is the hardest thing. See when something yeah. like this happens, like, wow, it's, initially there was a whole, this is a holiday type vibe, Gal, We were discussing that, like, you know, for the first week, you're like, great. And then all of a sudden, to, um, the routine, you know? It's hard to stay proactive. But with the likes of doing things like this, this is keeping me proactive. So as a company, we've removed, we've moved everything to digital. And we've supported our partners, retailers, DJs, artists we're working with. And we, yeah, we've just supported them via apps like Zoom, which we're currently using now. And, you know... Me and you two have had this chat over the phone a couple of weeks ago. It's really sort of, um, I think a lot of companies doing this are really sort of working out, working out now that this is a potential way in the future that this could work, you know. You've got to take the good with the bad, of course you have, but you've also got to look at the positives. And I'm reaching people that I wouldn't necessarily have time to reach because I'm spending so much time on the road. So I think as a company, we are actually, I think it wouldn't, wouldn't shock me if we came out of isolation and we reevaluated the way we communicate with our end user and how we help other people within the industry from Pioneer DJ Global. And this is definitely, you know, it's a real eye opener. So there's always going to be ways when something like this happens that companies, especially us and get you guys and you know, the company will be ahead of the game when this finishes are the ones that have been you know straight on it, adapting to to it, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think the worst. I think together, the worst thing, it's been massive, you know. Uh, yeah, I think the worst thing you can do as a company right now is sit back, um, mm. look at your accounts, contact the furlough side type side of things. I think obviously that there's certain things that needs to be done, but I think every company, especially within our industry, which is the most fickle industry you could ever really work in, you know, we're not in retail, we're not in the, you know, we're we're, we're in the music industry. Yeah. I think now's the time to grow your online base, to grow your contacts, to grow your networking. But when this is over, because the companies that are still moving at a fast rate when this is over, that's really going to show who's been actually been proactive during the lockdown and coming up with new ways of working and how do we support the end user. And I know you guys are doing it, doing this itself, and we're doing it. So when we come out of this, you never know, you may have 400 more people that know who you are. And I think this is yeah. the best way of, of doing it. I know a few people that I've had to get on the phone to and say, look, you really should be looking at your online presence here. Try not to sit down in the dumps because they're sat there complaining we're not selling equipment. And I'm like, yeah, but you should be. You're still working digitally. But if you're not selling equipment now when everybody's at home being able to be DJs, then you're really doing something wrong. This is the perfect opportunity to grow your online base. And if, if you are a working DJ, you're a working producer, 
now's the time to write off to your record label. This is time to do the stuff that you never have time to do. So, you know, there's positives and negatives to this this pandemic. I, I think you'll probably find, I mean, I, I know just personally speaking through my own Facebook feed, um, you know, there has been plenty, plenty DJs and people working with like live streams and trying to get stuff. So actually, even though it's a pandemic, it's probably quite a good time for music in terms of people honing their skills. Of course, definitely, you know, and there's so much support that not just we're offering, guys like yourselves are offering online support. We are literally bringing the booth and technology to your bedroom via, <laughs> we really are, you know. Bedroom DJ, isn't it? Everyone's a bedroom <laughs> DJ now. <laughs> I, was just, I was just about to say, even the biggest now, Everyone's back to square one. Everyone is. Everyone's a bedroom DJ now. It's of back to you know, Some of them have very nice houses to be bedroom DJs in. Yeah, in Miami <laughs> with a pool outside. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, not a bad bedroom DJ. Yeah, and then some of them, uh, you know, are in the bank smack in the centre of Manchester in a two-bed apartment. So, the, the, I mean, the demographic is a little different. But yeah. initially, we're all back to square one doing the same thing. I've spoken with some artists recently this week who have asked for um, just content regarding a certain aspect of a product that we have and I needed to show them a few things. And yeah, a lot of them were, you know, you ask how they are and a lot of them are saying, you know, it, it really goes back to the whole, one of my favorite piece of advice I ever got was leave the ego at the door because one day we're all going to be in the same boat, no matter what you do in the next 50 years of your career, we're all going to be end up in the same boat. And a lot of the local um, famous DJs that I know have all said it's so weird because I am back to where I was before yeah. all this happened. I'm just like my next door neighbour who's mixing on a piece of equipment. And the actual signed artist has probably got equipment that's, that, that isn't as advanced as your next door neighbour. And it really goes back to the whole do leave your ego at the door within this industry because what you will find if, as growth in this industry is there's always, some, always someone better than you and everybody yeah. is in the same boat. And this has really proved that theory. Now we're all stuck in our homes, mixing from a bedroom. See, yeah. do you know who I feel, I feel sorry for any DJs who were potentially really, or any musician that was like just guaranteed their first tour or just guaranteed, you know, their first big gigs or whatever. And then it's like, oh no, world pandemic. Because what position does that leave these people in? Let's say this goes for six months, just for example, until things really uptake. What if those promoters who were then going to take that chance on someone is kind of like, ah, you need to rebuild again because, you know, that's the kind of worrying thing. There's so many people in that point. back to diversity though, Gal, doesn't it? It's like, it's like how you can be diverse enough to go, well, I'm not going to just sit back and take that. This is yeah. happening regardless. You can't do anything about it. So are you going to up the game on live streams? Are you going to delve into music production? Are you going to make sure you get those five tunes finished? Crazy time. How you look at it, everything's yeah. about how you choose to look at the situation, you know? No, obviously, <laughs> Sam, you're coming at it from an angle. You you have DJed, you have produced stuff like that, but you're involved in the music industry in, in a bit of a different way, mm. uh, which a lot of people are interested in. So, for yeah. example, what Stephen's talking about, right? you're right, a DJ can get creative in many ways with our social media, whatever it may be, right? But what about people that maybe aren't in front of the camera, that aren't the artist? What if they're really stimulated by working with agents or working with managers or working in the background and the whole industry's kind of on the shelf at the moment? What do they do? This is a, it's a really good question. Um, this is, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough. This is the, probably the greatest chance a DJ coming up is ever going to get for networking. Because once we're back on the road, <laughs> and once you're contacting your promoters, can I get a gig? If you're traveling, if you're flying to Spain or Italy to go and play at a festival, you're not going to have chance to do the networking from your home. You'll have to rely on networking and meeting people on the road, which is a good way of doing it. But you're not going to, for anybody listening, you're not going to get a better chance than you are now to write off to the companies you've always wanted to work with. Get advice off the industry that are literally sat in their bedroom, you know, You'll be surprised at how many emails you may send. You're always going to get a few people writing back to you. This is a good opportunity to offer your services to a label, to a company, to an education center like yourselves, to colleges. You know, 
You've really got to think outside the box, and this is a perfect opportunity to do so. Please do not sit back and rely on just live streams. Live streams. The, thing, the thing is, just to add to that, Sam, I've been finding this interesting. Like, no longer, I've been talking to record labels and stuff, and the kind of the way they're looking at it is a bit different because we're now making music for streaming mm. rather than live performances. So people are still listening. There's still a need to create, always, yeah. but it might not be been, being played at festivals for a for a long time, but it's like the music's still to be made. Um, they're still selling music, they're still streaming it, people are still listening, but it's, it's just so strange now that it's not for clubs or festivals at the moment. No, I know, yeah, but at the same time, off the back of that, just just it, think of, I think Mixmag did a, um, an article on this and I read it a couple of weeks ago. Think of the amount of music that is great music that is getting, currently being produced in your bedroom because these artists and producers no longer have the stress of travel and it's, yeah. I travel as a job. It's, it's stressful. You know, you're on and off flights, you're, you're in the car, you're on trains, uh, you know. And think of the amount of, this, this going back to a girl's question, this is a perfect opportunity and time to really hone your skills in at home because once this is yeah. over, you'll have learned something new. You'll have learned a different way of working. You will have contacted, say, 50 record labels or <coughs> you might be on two new promo listings You'll have contacted promoters, you'll have contacted, let's say, ADE, for example, offer them services that you acquire, so offer the services that they acquire. And you may have even helped them in the bloody mailing listing online, and you just sat there, but you've no idea how far that will go in the future, you know. And this time that we've got, use it to the best of your abilities. I have been absolutely flat out since lockdown started. On the weekends, I'm, I'm pretty much sleeping in. I'm busier now than I was when lockdown wasn't here. And that is because I've, choos I've chosen to use this time to think outside the box. How can I support our partners like yourselves? How can I support the end user? We've got tours on the way. We've, I've done videos on production. I've done all sorts because it's just a time to do it. And I know when this comes out, I've got about yeah. 50 people to catch up to because... I've just created so much more work for not just myself, but for the company, you know. And I'm looking forward to your video that you're going to do for us, um, for the new website, Sam. Yeah. That you probably know about, you don't know about yet, no? Oh, well, we're definitely... yeah, I'm telling you, you're doing it now live on Zoom. I'll, I'll just add this one to the list, hang on. Add it to the list, mate. <laughs> see, the th see, another thing I think is probably an important part, because obviously the dance music industry has... You know, it's got definite big issues with mental health and, as you say, people travelling and stuff like that. So, actually, this is probably a good time for people's well-being as well in terms of spending quality time with the family, maybe reaching out to these promoters and stuff. And that important point that you're making, Sam, and, like, these people are home. These yeah. people have nothing else to do. So they probably are looking at their emails. They probably are seeing the DMs that are coming in. So yeah. if you something to say exactly that this is such an important point to reach out because you might even just brighten their day up they might be having a bad day you know you, you don't know yeah. this is a crazy I, time. Think it's, um, I think it's a per perfect opportunity as well and um, going back to the mental health I know a lot of artists that have suffered from it I personally haven't been in that position yet and I hope I never have to get to that I feel sorry for people that do but this is a perfect opportunity to just reevaluate how you're spending your time in this industry and this career yeah. And you try, excuse me, you try not to push the boat out too far because it's all well and good getting offered a job or a gig or if you're a sound engineer or a lighting engineer or anything like that. It's all well and good getting offered this. But at what point do you stop and think, I have to make sure I'm keeping up with home life? And I think we can all learn from this being mm -hmm. sat in your house. I think you're going to find a lot of DJs are going to reevaluate the way they work in the near future you're going to see a lot of these online party streams when lockdown's finished it's obviously the party is going to go mental when everybody leaves their home but what you'll find is a lot of the clever djs will say well i could promote this party and not actually travel all the way to Spain. Yeah. But, you know we could do this in our house on friday night and i think i think you'll find a lot of djs will start looking at that and less yeah not much less travel but less important travel you know, I think I think it's, it's really it's, it's sparking a lot of innovation for sure. Like you're seeing some the amazing creative like go 
the software you can get now for live streaming and stuff and inviting people in. You're almost creating full blown virtual parties that can oh. be used for promotion or you know, and whatever it's like. If you look at the education aspect, I mean, I know myself and Stephen Kirkwood, we came up from the vinyl era where you, you'd go and buy a set of 12 tens, still got on, thank God for that. You'd buy a mixer that probably didn't even have a crossfade in. You used to have to, remember when you used to have to stick the pen in and you used to have to shoot <laughs> yeah, yeah. the Nobody had any money. Nobody had any money. You know, and going back to those days, if those days were around now, it'd be a perfect time to learn, but you would be learning alone with little support. What the whole world is offering now with the likes of the technologies, the amount of support we can give the end user to learn how to DJ, learn this industry. And you can take a look at the webinars like this. This is more of a, what I like to call soft skills webinar. Hard skills would, if you were getting this webinar and I'd have a DJ Dex in front of me and I'd show some pretty cool stuff on the decks. But a lot of people forget the soft skills, the management side of it, the business side of it. You may be the world's greatest mixologist. You may be production DJ, you may be the world's best. But if you can't have that conversation with a promoter, if you can't have that conversation with a yep. record label, you're no good. You, you, you may as well stay at home. It, the soft skills are just as important as the hard skills. And I had to learn that a long time ago. And I made so many mistakes. And I ended up taking a career into the business side of things as opposed to the performer. And I enjoyed that a lot more than the performance side of things. But it's made me realize how important it is. And this is a good advice for anybody listening into this. The soft skills are just as important as the hard skills. And this time that we've got on our hands, you can learn these soft skills. How do you do invoicing? How do you speak to promoters? How do you get your message across to them? How do you get this track here? You know, yeah. it's not just all about how you work in Ableton or how you work on a set of decks. People need to understand that to be successful so, in this industry. What, what, what about though, like, is even like, um, like, you know, DJs, producers, you know, it's such a, it is such a, a, a niche thing right so if you're wanting to be even like a music producer right a lot of those people aren't very they're not much of a show person right they maybe want to be locked away in a dark room making the music and then even the dj booth depending on where your dj might be really dark and they're not even a main feature if you know what i mean it's like you know they're just playing and they're maybe they've not got the confidence so would you maybe suggest to people that are a little bit worried about putting themselves out there as you say they might be the best mixologist so what if you get a team around you what if you ask for friends help then or like someone that maybe is a little bit more outspoken you say do you would you help me with that because is it a little bit unfair to ask an artist to do everything even though that's the modern way is that the help that you can get on from friends then or are people that you know that are a wee bit more extrovert? Do you know what I mean? Of course. No, I, I totally agree with you. I was, you know, I, I'm going to revert back to you guys. I met you guys two years ago and in two years we've done a lot of work together. We've got the accreditation sorted with Pioneer DJ and Scopetti. I was, um, one of the things that I was really impressed with was how Stephen Kirkwood had the skills, the mindset of, business side of things he had the able turn he, you know he was he was signed but i always thought gal was the best front man i think i've ever worked with and you two have come together to create a successful business which is ever growing now if you were to ask him kirkwood to do everything himself i personally no offense here i don't think it it happen, as, it as, i don't think it would have been as success, successful because he's a good front man but he's no stephen galoni whereas if you ask gal to do sort of I mean, we, we, we had trouble getting this Zoom sorted because of Gala uh, <laughs> 30 minutes ago. You know, so you work hand in hand so well. But what I love about you guys as well is you, there's no ego there. You know your strengths and you work to them. Don't try and, I mean, always develop, try and, try and develop your weak points, but always understand, work to your strengths. <clears throat> if you're great in the business side of things, having the conversations with artists if you're good up on a stage of a mic presenting do that yeah don't try and because you're going to get left behind if you're good sat in a dark <clears throat> you know, stick to that stick to what you know but there's no problem in collaborating together if you know if you're a dj and producer and you know somebody that's good at the management and the business side of things by all means drop them a message listen let's yeah, yeah. let's have a conversation that's all that's you skill, skill swap thing 
just to add to that, Sam, it's like kind of skill swap, isn't it? So if you're good at one thing, like, you know, the way it worked with me and Gal, it's like, I was setting up all the stuff and I knew Gal was just great with people and he wanted to go out and about and network and do all this stuff that I'd rather be in. Exactly. Making sure all the back end of the business was right and running all the numbers and yeah. doing, doing strategy stuff on a whiteboard, do you know what I mean? Although me and you, Gal, we would do that a lot, but and again, that skill swapping thing is so important, so important. I think it was really important as well, though, because when I first got involved working with Stephen, it was way before we ever had a business. Like, I... I only ever just done it out of being a friend and saying, look, I want to give you advice because that's great if I can have any input and vice versa. Like if you can give me, then it was more always just out of, oh, I let me help in any way I can to push something. Beautifully, you know, fast forward five, 10 years, we've got a business and we do stuff together. And I mean, it is, it's been a dream come true in that that's sense. It. I mean, you like, know, just to give you an example there, Gal, like, the first program, I managed to get our first program sorted, but then immediately I'm like, man, Gal would be good at this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, like, Gal would be good at this. Like, do you want to... goes back to the ego thing. That goes back to the ego thing where people think that they need to do it all, and no, I'll, I'll only be as good if I do it, and it was, like, quite early on recognised, like, actually, let's work together. This will be a more fulfilling project. Totally. And yeah. fast forward five years, we've done about 40 of those programs now, yeah. which have developed even more with so many different companies. And again, goes back to what you were saying earlier about if one thing fails, what other things can you be on that can yeah. sustain either your lifestyle or your career? Or, you know, you've got to, you've got to flow like water, as they say. Yeah. You know, you can't just be I like, think, oh, no, it's stopped. I think, um, I think one of the... I, I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't call it a mistake. I don't think it's a mistake. But I think a common misconception that you, you, you will find with this industry is um, a, a, an 18-year-old DJ, let's say from Scotland, for example, will go and visit you guys, get DJ tutoring. Then he likes it. Then he goes to visit Kirkwood to get production training. All of a sudden, he's establishing himself as a DJ producer. I don't think there's anything wrong with that because if you can produce and DJ, you're a DJ producer. Yeah, yeah. Whether you sign yeah. or not. What the misconception is, they then have this insight where they will see the likes of Jamie Jones, King, Slam, whatever, you know, Dennis Sultan. They'll see these DJs and they'll go, that'll be me in a year. And we both know it doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. What that takes is years of, of hard work, graph, getting put down. Not bags. I mean, bags. The knockbacks are just, I mean, I, it's I, relentless. Like, even, even now, knockbacks are, are a yeah, daily. I, you live with them. You, you live to actually enjoy them. Yeah. Because exactly. it's the knockback, it's the thing that actually inspires more creativity. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, you do not be afraid of the knockbacks. And if you don't think you're going to get any, then I, you know, you're really not going to succeed. I have been knocked back. So many times, I still get knocked back on a on a yeah, weekly basis. Bad. Ideas just get thrown out the window, and I may have spent six months working on one, and it's no. But you got to take that on board, get a hold of it, and go right. Okay, that didn't work. I'd like to know the reason why, because then you can adapt. And I can assure you, these knockbacks one day will they'll, they'll never stop. But you get the occasional idea that comes through. So the eighteen year old DJ who suddenly thinks he's the next Sultor or the next Jackmaster or the next Slam or whoever, or Stephen Kirkwood, the next DJ that, that wants to be like that needs to fully understand that there's, that's not the only route you can take within this industry. I know artists like yourself, Kirkwood, who own a business, tutor, are signed, traveling, playing in Ibiza. There's about six fucking different things going on there. I yeah. know, and no offense, but you're still not at the level of you say your drum code artists, yeah. But, you, but you've got your fingers in so many little things, and I know one day you're going to be able to take a sit back and let it all happen. Yeah, that yeah. Is the best, it's the best way of going about this. I've done production. I've been a DJ for nearly 15 years now, and I've travelled Europe to various places being a DJ. But I've also done a lot of free work. I've worked in conferences. I've hosted conferences. I've worked with Pioneer DJ. I've got my fingers in so many little things. I've done the podcasting. I've produced for people, et cetera, et cetera. And I can only say now at the age of 30, sorry, 21, of course, 21, look at me. No, I can only say at the age of 30 years old, I feel like it's only just starting. Yeah, I totally. I feel like it's only just starting. There's so much more that I need to do. 
and I've had 10, 15 years in this industry so far, you know. Um, so regards to the 18 year old DJ that, that has, has gone through the practice and practice, I can assure you you've never had enough practice. I still have to practice a lot these days. He's learned how to produce. I'm gonna give a vital piece of advice. Do not just sit there in your bedroom, making a track, sending it and thinking that's enough. It's never enough. You have to network in is your biggest, biggest, um, um, biggest asset. Yes, asset. Network, leave your ego at the door. That's a key one. Do not send an ego anywhere. I've always left my ego at the door before a meeting, whether I'm with, I don't know, meeting defected or meeting an artist or even meeting you guys, meeting the retail, even meeting friends, leave it at the door. Yeah. Get the network in, sort the ego out. Nerves, that's something I want to touch upon. I love nerves. I get nervous before most things I do. I use it as a tool. If you're not nervous, you haven't planned enough. You're not ready for this. If you're not nervous before a mm -hmm. gig and you're walking in too calm, you've not done enough. That I can assure yeah. you. It doesn't, it, it, nerves are there because it means something to you, like majorly. It's a drive. It's a drive. The more nerves, right. the more nerves, the more you've, you've, you've thought about it, the more you're kind of, banking on it you know you've ran through it a million times you know what i mean that's, that's all part of the amazing thing and then once you do whatever it is the gig or you nail that contract whatever else the feeling you get after it when you know oh, you've worked for it yeah, man we did uh we we did for the for the listeners say we did some school um conference up in glasgow great conference we loved it there unfortunately after everything that's happened this year it's been cancelled but we're looking forward to next year's and we're going to come back bigger and stronger but we, we, the three of us worked together for the first, I think it was the first proper conference we ever did. Um, Scapade had supported Pioneer the year beforehand because I couldn't make it and done a fantastic job of it. And I remember last year's, I remember just before we had Kink up there with us, Scal was hosting Kink and he was doing a, a show. I remember he turned up two minutes before uh, two minutes before it started and, and I remember the, the nerves I was going through thinking I'm going to have to get on stage here and just cover and I am not kink. <laughs> so you know, they're probably going to take one look and think, well, kink's got a new haircut, you know. But I remember doing a, a Torres talk there and there must have been 100 people in the crowd and I've done these all over Europe and the nerves that were going through me at the time, but I knew they were good, they were a tool. And once it was done, we had a beer after it and we were all on cloud nine because we just, we'd accepted those nerves. We know mm -hmm. we planned. We'd never left a stone unturned. We practiced the scripts. We practiced the equipment and we knew it was going to work, but those nerves were just monumental. I just remember it. And I remember yeah, yeah. The feeling after we'd nailed last year's Soma and it was like, boom. I know. Nothing bad. It was Nothing good. Bad. And, then, and then this year we, you know, the, the, the conference asked us to do even more, you know, this is, this is what this is what it's about, you know. You're just growing so, and growing. So next year, obviously, so much go has been moved to 2021, hasn't it? 2021. So I mean, anyone who's watching this or whatever, probably about a lot of our uh, subscribers and people that follow us that have been to the so much schools, especially if you live in the UK, certainly Scotland. So well, there's no excuse to miss next one. Because you've plenty of plan for it. <laughs> so, there's plenty of time, but it's also as Sam says, it's going to be bigger and better. We're involved in it in such a monumental level this year. Obviously, with us, with accreditation with Pioneer DJ, it's been a, a, a huge uh, feat of achievement for us, to be honest, Sam, working with you and working with the, the brand that is Pioneer DJ, because yeah. I mean, we, we, we touched on a bit about the start of this business and I talked about, talking about, about whiteboards and stuff. So I, we'd actually wrote Pioneer DJ on that whiteboard um, when we didn't have any money, you know, and, and we just had the ideas and, and the enthusiasm. Just enthusiasm. You literally didn't know anybody in the company at the time. Yeah. <laughs> we just sent an email to your cheeky email, hoping we'd get so a reply. Just put it together, you know, and, and, and we're honest, open and honest, truthful about where we were at, what we were doing, who we were working with, how we were helping young people, even at that early stage. And, and look how it's in five years, but that's a five year journey to get to Pioneer DJ and Escapade being accredited together, right? Yeah. That's five years. We're talking there, it's not a year or two or three. Even five years is still short term. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And it's not even started yet, really. No, it's not really. I mean, realistically, when, when the accreditation happened, it gave you you guys a, a foothold within the industry to be registered as one of our training providers, which is, is big. That I think there's only around five in the whole of the UK and Ireland. So 
it was massive to get it. And it, I, we, it was a pleasure for us to give it you because you ticked all the boxes, you worked hard, you didn't slack on anything. Anything I needed, it was there and then. We worked together great in the conferences. Just to touch up on the, the five-year thing, what, uh, a piece of advice where I feel in 10 years to, to um, move to Pioneer DJ and do bigger and better and work with artists and stuff. And um, I wish I could go back and enjoy the journey a little more. This is something that I always tell everybody now. Uh, whether you've just started out, whether you're three years in, six years in, seven years in, and you haven't, you're not where you want to be, God, just enjoy it, man. Just enjoy what you're doing. You know, if I could go back, I wouldn't have gone back to my apartment at the time and stressed so much that things weren't happening. I'd have just enjoyed it. And if you trust the process, you're working hard, you're networking well, you're working as much hours as, it, as you can give you, you know, the free work's always good and you're DJing and you're producing and you're, you're, you're doing the right paths. It will happen for you, whether you go into the things that I went into, which is business, working with artists on training, working with guys like you, I prefer that, or whether you want to be the DJ producer, it's just the process, but God, just fucking enjoy it, man, you know. Like I said, if I could go back, I'd have enjoyed it a lot more at the time. And it's through times like these, and you see what's happening around the world, that, you know, it, it makes you take a step back and realise, you know what, things are okay for us, you know, things are okay for the majority, it's, and, and the things you do get stressed out about, like not being at a certain place, whatever else, you're less likely to get there if you're putting anxiety levels out or, or you're, you're yeah. putting out the stress, do you know what I mean? You're, oh, yeah. you're yeah. putting yeah. it further without realising Yeah, well, something like this puts it into perspective, I think, in terms of what life and really is important, you know, and sometimes, like, massive goals and massive things, they aren't always the most important things. Like, you actually have to have the, the head right and even the family life and, yeah. you know, being yeah. a, a nice balance. person. Being a nice like person, a character, all these things will develop as you develop, you know what I mean? Of course it is, yeah, you know, you're, you're not, you, you, there is the odd occasion where you will, um, you'll go to the top very quickly, which is great, you know, and if, if you get that chance, do it, but I'd say 80% of the time that those things don't happen. Well, most people usually spiral out of control when it's like that as well. Yeah, if, it's too, if it's too fast. Too, too much. Fast, yeah, too fast, too quick, you know, I mean, God rest him, but look at what happened to uh, Vici, you know, he 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 went massive in like three years, and unfortunately, he it killed him with his life. He was, and it's such a shame. And I don't think anybody in the industry wanted something like that. It wasn't my cup of tea, but you know, I liked I liked the the whole story of it all. And the guy, but you know, this is why I'm giving the advice and saying just trust the process, take your time with it, making make sure you're making the right moves, make sure you're getting your enough sleep, make sure your diet's right. Do not see all this traveling round and i get people saying to me it must be amazing the places you go to it is but it's tiring it's hard work really yeah. hard work so when i get home i make sure i, I, I de-stress i spend time with the family i got I, I concentrate my health and my fitness a lot i mean you guys are always complimenting these little swans here <laughs> <laughs> I, I make sure i take time on my health i've never fitness. noticed mate i've never noticed <laughs> <laughs> Because I know what can happen if you don't give your time to give yourself time to reset, and I think during this lockdown, um, this is a time to to reset and just just look at totally. what's going in life. Now, see, I think probably a good place to start kind of wrapping up here. One wee thing I want to ask you: What uh, have you got any DJ mixes or that that you recommend our, our guys to give a wee listen to in this time of quarantine? And don't oh just. Oh my god! Them. I'm so glad you've asked me this. Yeah, one of my favourite ones because I was a multi-genre DJ for many years before I just honed into sort of like the indie disco electronic sort of sets that I've been doing for years now. Um, I grew up in the disco, hip hop, R and B. I tried everything. And the beauty of doing that was I was never out of work as a DJ. I always had a gig coming up. Whereas a lot of friends honed into one genre and they, they'd skip a couple of weeks. I was out four nights a week at one point and it was, it was great. Go to YouTube and then we all know the famous Deck Mantle um, Festival. Boiler Room did one with Palms Tracks and I'm sure it's 2018. And it's one of the greatest DJ mixes. I think. There's loads out there, but that's the one that springs to mind. And he goes from acid, classic 80s synth. And I love, wow. I love, I love a massive 80s synth track. I'm a, I'm a sucker for one. Depp Mantle, yeah. Palms Tracks for the Boiler Room 2018. 
you know, his productions are insane as it is, so I can imagine the sets are brilliant as well. Absolutely. So there we go, Palm Tracks. He, he's, he's the one that, I, I, what I love about Palm Tracks, I've never had the chance to meet him, but I do remember a friend has, and he said, um, he, he's, he's gone off what I like to do. I never really plan a set. I just have a group of set lists, and I read the crowd. I think that is what skills as a DJ is, reading the crowd. That's a DJ, crowd, isn't it? That's a DJ, yeah. I don't go in and go, that track, that track, that track. I just know... 10 tracks track. for an hour, boom. These are getting played no matter what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like to, you know, if I have to chuck Shaka Khan in there, you better fuck your right. You, honestly, I fucking will put that Shaka Khan in there. <laughs> you know, I feel for you and all that. And then if I have to drop a Peggy Q remix of an acid track, I will do. I'll read the crowd, I'll see what they're after. If I've got that vibe going, I know I can test a few things out. I have tested tracks. I know from doing my record box and I know what tracks work with what. I do a lot of mixing in key. And then sometimes I'll chuck maybe a, a, a classic in there, Needing You or something like that to end it. Excellent. And, you know, good. I've had some very successful sets doing it that way. So, yeah. Amazing. Nice. What a, a pleasure, Sam. No, guys, Always thank you, thank you so yourself, much mate. for having me on. Really appreciate it. No worries, man. We'll do this again. This will be uh, one of many videos, hopefully, over this time, and we'll produce some content. Good yeah. to see you on the call as well, Stephen. And uh, I'm a just a wee thing before. I have been saying it throughout the call. Um, we're just launching a new website, escapestudios.com. Um, it feels amazing to get it up there. It's packed full of loads of great stuff. So we're in the process Excellent. of getting it up there. Um, we're going to be filling it with content, as we say, keeping things digital. Um, so when you get a chance, head on over there and, and check out the new site trips. But Sam, once again, thanks, mate. Cheers, Sam. Speak to you Cheers, soon. Cheers. Cheers.